Hi, everyone. Thank you for having me today. It's an absolute privilege to be here. I've attended ProductCon many times, but to be able to be up here and share some of my own insights is an absolute privilege. Yeah, so I'm here today to talk about cultivating an entrepreneurial mindset as product managers, how we can use this to drive success, innovation, and also for our professional growth. I am head of product at DAZN. Um, it's been amazing to be a part of DAZN and see some of the, the growth and the evolution over the last few years, but I'll get onto more on that in a moment. Today, I'm going to give you a little bit of context about my journey from founder into product. At the age of 20, whilst at university, me and my co-founder started one of our first businesses. We started it in our dorm room, and it came from a need of wanting to reinvent the way that we prep and study for our, for our exams. Myself, I'm dyslexic, so trolling through textbooks, regurgitating information, and going back into the exams just wasn't fit for me. So in our dorm rooms, my co-founder developed the app. It looked like something that was designed on paint. It was completely littered with bugs. But when we launched it, we realized that people were using it, and they were willing to use it through the terrible experience, and we realized that we were onto something. Very early on, in the early stages of the business, I was largely focused on growing the team, supporting with fundraising, and the marketing side of things. But we very quickly realized that the success and growth of the business wasn't from my extremely terrible marketing campaigns, but it was from the product itself. Every time we launched a new feature, we'd see our acquisition spike, our engagement grow, and our retention last that bit longer. And that was my real first experience of product-led growth. From then, I pivoted to being mainly focused on the product, skipped forward five years, and we managed to gain five million users across eight different regions. And we had a platform that allowed you to pre prepare for anything from GCSE to your test theory app when you're preparing for your um, theory exam. After the success of the business, I took some time out to figure out what I really wanted to do. I knew that I loved focusing on product, but I just wasn't up for the firefighting and the, the tough things that come with running a business. Luckily, this period was also peak Pokemon Go time, so I spent a lot of my time running through parks, chasing after Pikachu, trying to become the world's best trainer. I also spent some time figuring out what environment I want to be in and what environment I feel like I can succeed as a product manager. And for me, that was finding somewhere that was very entrepreneurial and allowed me to express those skills. This takes me to DAZN. DAZN is the world's leading sports streaming service targeted at those customers that are the most passionate. It's where you can go to watch Bundesliga in Germany, Formula One in Japan, or watch some of AJ's most iconic fights. Being at DAZN has been amazing. It had a very entrepreneurial start itself, with the founders really being able to identify what customers need. They were able to purchase the rights to some of the world's largest events, and realize that they can do a fantastic job at delivering this, these events to customers, but building a really customer-focused product. I would arguably say our customers are of the most passionate sports fans. They say, speak to your users, go and find your users, but it's not rare that I'd wake up on a Saturday morning with a LinkedIn message from a disgruntled fan telling me their very honest opinion of the feature that I've just launched, sometimes even turning up to the office to give us a lovely face-to-face -face review. But this is why it's so important for us to really be focused on the product, be able to pivot really quickly if Tyson Fury hurts his eye and we need to quickly roll back our next pay-per-view event, or we get the rights to the NFL and we need to launch something amazing for our customers in such a short space of time. I'm going to give you a little bit of a taste of what DAZN is. We've got a shiny new video here that I want to, that I want to demo for you all, just to give you a little bit more of an idea of what we do at DAZN and some of the growth that we've had recently. The Zone is the world's most exciting sports entertainment business. Using innovative platform technology, The Zone brings together all sports-related content, services, and products in a single, frictionless consumer experience. Enjoying sport is more than just watching the game. And so, alongside premium live and on-demand content, with The Zone, fans can join communities and share experiences. Catch up on scores and the latest news. Play games and place bets. Buy merchandise and tickets, all within a single personalized account. And it's not just the fans who love us. The Zone is fast becoming the partner of choice for all major sports leagues in the world. 
By aggregating today's fan experience, we create new and exciting opportunities for leagues, promoters and rights holders. And with 3 billion fans around the globe driving a $500 billion sports entertainment market, the opportunity is plain to see. We're adding more sports, more markets, more products, more of what the fans want. We're building the ultimate daily destination for sports fans and for the future of sport. This is DAZN. It really has been fascinating to be a part of the growth of the zone, and I honestly do feel it's because they really embody what it is to be an entrepreneur in the zone and how we apply that to product management. And it just shows you how important it is to have this mindset, whether you're running a startup, a scale up, or a large business. Okay, what do I want to actually dive into today? Some of the character traits that I feel like we need to be able to embody an entrepreneurial mindset. And for me, that looks like creativity, resi resilience, and a willingness to take risks. Why do we need these things? They're the things that help us identify some of the gaps that we may have in our products or in the market, how we can innovate for real impact, and how we can drive real growth and change in our industries. How can we do this? I want to explore four specific areas to equip you with some of the most actionable tools that we can apply to our day to day so that we can, as individuals, drive real change in our businesses. First of all, visionary thinking and future orientation. As a founder, you're constantly pushed and forced to think about what does five years look like? What does 10 years look like? What does 15 years look like? And I absolutely love that. It forced me to have this blue sky thinking mindset quite often. And it really meant that we were able to think about what the future looked like and work backwards. And we were always really clear on what our plan was and what it is that we wanted to achieve. It made us really risk adverse. It meant that we could pivot really agile in a really agile way because we always knew what we wanted to achieve at the end of the day. As product professionals, I feel like this isn't a muscle we get to flex that often. When we're thinking about the deadline at four o'clock or the demo tomorrow, or that A-B test that we need to quickly iterate on, we don't always get to, to flex that blue sky thinking muscles that we, that we have and that I feel like are really essential that we need. But how do, how do we do this? How do we start flexing those muscles more on a day-to-day -day so we can start thinking about the future and drive real impact and get out of that day-to-day -day slog that we are normally in as product professionals? I think the first thing for me is actually getting away from your desk. Sometimes it can feel like you're extremely productive when we need to get back to that team's message or when we need to reply to that email. But scheduling time to actually get away from the desk, take a walk, actually think about what we're trying to achieve, really understanding what it is that we want to do and what our passions are, and this is how we can get into that creative, that creative brain. Be a user. For me, I try my best to use my products as much as possible, but use other products as well. I know that our customers are not only using DAZN, they're using other products. So sometimes I'll take a pen and paper and I'll sit down and I'll analyze other products. What are things I like? What are some of the things that I don't like? What are the things that frustrate me? And that also helps me get into that creative space. As a sports fan, I know that if I'm quickly rushing home from work and I want to catch a game, I don't want to spend 10 minutes trying to log in on a living room device. I don't know how many of you have tried to put your email or password into a TV device, but it's infuriating. And this kind of led to ideas around how can we use second screens to innovate the way that we allow our customers to access um, their sports on their living room devices? How can we leverage QR codes? How can we leverage pairing so that we can get our customers, they're getting home, they can get access to the game as soon as possible? Diversify your learning. Another space at the zone where we're really entering is influencer boxing. It's largely on, it's largely on the rise and it's something that we're really investing in. But me, as, as an individual, I know not much about influencers. I don't know much about KSI, and I don't know much about Jake Paul. But I take the time to go and learn. I'll listen to their podcast. I'll watch their content. I'll understand where their customers are. And this is where we can get ideas like, how do we incorporate Twitch in our platform? How do we make sure that we're engaging those customers and we're building products that speak to them? And lastly, have fun. Whenever I run blue sky thinking workshops with my teams, I always tell them, come with your silly hat on. Think about what would you build if you had a magic wand and there was no such thing as technical limitations or team resources. 
Essentially, some of the key takeaways I want to take for visionary thinking is, one, prioritize it. It's so important that we prioritize this way of thinking so we can think ahead when we're thinking about our roadmaps, when we're thinking about what is the impact that we actually want to have in the long term. Next area I want to focus on is being brave and proactive. As a founder, you have to be brave and you have to be, be proactive. Having an idea just isn't enough. You need to take one foot in front of the other and actually just get stuff done. And sometimes this can mean failing a lot. I say failing with quotation marks, and sometimes it means being able to pivot really quickly. But again, being able to be brave enough to do that is just so important. When I first started at DAZN, I initially only owned one small space of the product, and that was acquisition on living room devices. And I quickly knew that I was going to have to do two things. I was going to have to deep dive and learn about living room devices because I knew absolutely nothing about building products on TVs and Xboxes. And I also had to make sure I was proactive and demonstrated my value in this very small space of the business. So when I started, I sat down with some of the old teams and some of the new teams to learn about this space. I spoke to the UX and the architects to understand how we design and how we develop on these products. And then I also, it was also really important for me, like I said, to quickly demonstrate my value in this space. But how do we actively, and then skip, sorry, skip ahead three years, I now look after seven of our core markets, including 150 of our emerging markets and our pay-per-view offering, just because I was able to be proactive and take one foot in front of the other. But how do we actively do this in our day-to-day? -day? First of all, it's building trust internally. How do you build trust with all of your stakeholders? Be the expert in your area. If you are focused on one specific area of your product or a large area, be an expert in that area. So when there are opportunities for growth or there are areas where people need to ask questions, they know that you are the person to come to. Take initiative. Put your hand up and ask for that additional bit of work. Put your hand up and say, I want to learn more about this. Speak to the UX team and say, hey, can I sit next to you whilst you're designing so I can learn a little bit more about this so that I can open my mind when I'm thinking about what I want to build in the future? and look for areas of growth. Always look for areas in which you feel like there's new opportunities. Whilst I am sitting down with the architects, I'm thinking about, hey, actually, maybe we can start thinking about how not only we can acquire users on our living room devices, but how we activate them and make sure that they actually stay on the platform. And I only was able to do this by speaking to other teams and really diving deep in, into my specific area. So my key takeaway for this one is be brave, be bold, and be proactive. One of my proudest moments at DAZN was when I was scrolling through Instagram and I saw one of my features being promoted by Anthony Joshua. And I think to myself, I was only able to kind of develop things like this and see things like this online by being brave, being bold, and being proactive. If I had just stayed in my remit, I would never have been able to work on such amazing features like our pay-per-view offering. I'm just going to play a little video for you. Then add the pay per view event. If you're already a Design subscriber, sign in. Select the event and follow the steps to buy. You don't want to miss this fight. Live on Design pay per view. So I would say, please don't stay in your lane and don't wait for somebody to give you that extra bit of work. Put your hand up, take the initiative, and go forward. Another key thing that I feel like is really important and something I took from being a founder was being able to be a great storyteller. It was so important that I was able to tell the story of who I am as a founder, the story of my business, and then the story of the business future success. This is something I was terrible at, my co-founder was fantastic at. I always used to hear, we just don't get it, we don't see the vision, we don't think it's for us, and I realized I had to quickly work on this skill. And when I did, I started hearing yes a lot more. And this is something that I also take into my life as a product professional as well, whether I'm thinking about presenting my roadmap and getting sign-off, whether it's 
me trying to get that extra bit of work that I feel like I deserve and I want to work on? Can I tell a good story to convince my manager to allow me to try this new A-B test that isn't part of my, my normal day-to-day? -day? Also, when thinking about getting a promotion, can I tell a really good story about what I've done, what I've achieved, and the impact I feel like I can have in a new role? It's just so important to be able to tell a really good story. But how do we actually think about telling a good story? For me, it's really focusing on who are the audience? Who are you speaking to? So if I'm presenting something to the marketing team, I have a very different story than if I'm presenting something to our CTO. Marketing want to know about the numbers. What is this going to look like for the users? How is this going to help the top of the funnel? The CTO wants to know, is this scalable? Is this going to, have other, is this going to build us a platform that gives us more enablers for other f features in the future? And then think about the narrative as well. Simply, I always try to have a beginning, a middle, and an end. And sometimes this might look like presenting the problem, presenting the solution, and then what impact that solution will have. And another thing is just prep and plan, something I've been doing a lot the last few weeks preparing for today. Get in front of the mirror, rehearse your script, practice it with somebody, somebody that you trust, and you'll really start to see the power of storytelling in your day-to-day -day life as a product professional. Like I said, whether it's something really simple around presenting your roadmap or if it's trying to get that promotion that you want, harness that skill of being a good storyteller. And I now want to look at my fourth and final one, unleashing excellence and having a growth mindset. I feel like we hear this growth mindset quite a lot, and we are encouraged to have growth mindsets at work. But for me, being a founder, moving into product, having a growth mindset was all-encompassing. What does it look like inside and outside work? What can I do outside of work that will really impact me and my career and my professional growth? One of those areas for me is around having a really good routine. When I don't feel motivated, my routine is what I rely on. For me, routine creates habits. Habits create discipline. And just as simple as my morning routine really impacts the way that I tackle my day-to-day -day life at work. And it's things like that are so simple, but they create really healthy habits. Challenge yourself. I mentioned before about being brave and being proactive and really challenging yourself. But do it outside of work as well, and you will see the impacts inside work. I recently started rock climbing, something that I'm not particularly good at, but it really makes me think about how I'm solving problems. Am I being fearless? Am I going to make it to the top of that new wall next week? What am I, where am I going to put my hands next? Where am I going to put my feet next? And those problem-solving skills, I take them back into my day-to-day -day life. Set smart goals. Set really actionable goals, again, inside and outside of work, whether it's financial, and then how does that lead to your um, career development, whether they're relationship goals and you want to be a better listener, that works inside and outside of work. And then finally, always ask for feedback, something that we're really good at at Design, and particularly with my manager who's here today, he's always giving me really good feedback. I don't wait until my end of year review, and it always lets me know where I stand. And it's really important when having a growth mindset is always being really conscious about where you are at the moment, where some of your gaps are, and how we can improve. And this is another way of just how we can really think about excelling our personal growth and having that entrepreneurial mindset where everything is all-encompassing. Lastly, I want to look at how we can then apply these things to our environments and our workspaces. How can we actually take all of these things and make them really actionable? For me, this is twofold. It's how we can do this as individuals and how we can do this as leaders. As individuals, it's all about building trust internally. Take that initiative. Ask the right questions. Be brave. And like I said before, don't stay in your lane. Think about, constantly think about what does the future look like? How can you constantly expand? And show real proactiveness and initiative. Because no one else is going to give it to you. You have to do it yourself. And then as leaders, what can we do? How are we really thinking about how we're building an environment where our teams feel safe to try, be proactive, and sometimes fail? Are we creating an environment where they feel like they can be curious and they can go and sit next to the UX team or they can go and sit next to the architect and learn from them? Are we encouraging our teams to ask the right questions, to always ask, what if? But what if we did it this way? Or what if it looked like this? So if there's one thing I want to say is, when we go back to work tomorrow, as individuals, what can we do to lead by example? And as leaders, what can we do to encourage our teams to be curious? Lastly, just, I just want to recap on a couple of things. 
Firstly, it starts with you. Be proactive and invest in yourself. And look at yourself as not just product professionals, but as business owners. Whether you're owning yourself, or you're owning your team, or you're owning one small area of the product, look at yourself as a business owner. And be curious and focus on your all-round skills. Two, be bold. Find your passion in whatever it is you do and think about the impact that you really want to have and what steps it's going to take to deliver that impact. And thirdly, environment. Find the right environment for you that will help you foster that entrepreneur inside of you, that will encourage you and reward you for taking risks and always lead by example. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.